Welcome back. This is the second in my series of using Python with MetaTrader 5. As I mentioned in the first episode, I said that there are two basic situations where you would use Python with MetaTrader 5. One is where you want to write the trading bot in Python and have it use MetaTrader 5 as basically the API to the broker. And the other is where you may still be working inside MetaTrader but you want to make specific calls to Python for functions that might be using system resources that you don't have access to otherwise, or specific functions. I'm working on the first situation at the moment where I'm writing a trading bot in Python that is using MetaTrader as the interface to the broker. I've renamed the files I had last week, so this 01py default is just the default that you get from creating a Python file with the editor and I'm not going to be doing that again because as I explained there is no value to that. Uh, this PyAlert is the file that we created last week, I've renamed it here and I'm numbering these so we know where we're up to. Uh, but today I'm up to number three moving average monitor so I'm adding an indicator. Uh, I'm also going to be doing a little bit of code cleanup. I already have MetaTrader 5 running here so we won't have any time lost in loading that when we run these. And again I'm going to open this with VS Code and this time I've actually remembered to increase the font size so it's easy for you to see. This is just the file from last time and remember all we were doing was looking at the price changes in an instrument. The MA monitor file so far is just a copy of that so I haven't made any changes. So the first thing I'm going to do is a little bit of code improvement. I'm only making small changes here. I've already moved all of the code into a single function called main uh, and I call that with this statement at the end of the code. But I also want to refine main so that it follows the standard sequence of processing. So what I want to do here is turn this main function so that it calls an initialization, calls a loop to run the function, and then when everything's finished it will call deinitialization. So this first section that I have in the code where I'm simply gathering information about the prices and the symbols that will all be initialization. This loop will go into what inside MetaTrader would have been on tick. And then finally, this shutdown is the only thing that I'll have in the dnit. So let me begin with the dnit. That's pretty simple. This loop, I'm actually going to take the while true out of the loop itself. I'm going to put that in the main function. So the loop will just include all of this code. And also this time sleep that will be in the outside. So I'll just take that away for now. And then all of this will be in the init. Now in main, then I'm going to call init. And I'm going to return a boolean from the init so that I know if it's worked. If the init worked, then the next thing I'm going to do is call the loop, and I'm going to call that on a repeated basis. So this is where I put the while true. Actually, I'm not going to put while true, I'm going to put while loop, and the loop will return a Boolean value. And then I add the time sleep here. If init works, then I'll call the loop repeatedly until the loop returns false. Each time I call the loop, I'm going to sleep five. I explained that last time. I'm going to leave that at five for now. If you're writing a genuine um, trading robot, you might want to reduce that from five seconds to something shorter. And then finally, dinit. So down to init, which means if not MT5 initialize, I print an error message. Instead of calling the shutdown here, because that will happen inside the dinit, and then return, I'm just going to return false. So return false just means that it will come out of init and this if init will be false. So it will just go straight to the d init. I can put the return false then in each of these conditions. That while true is gone, I'm going to move old price here, so I'm setting it with all of the other prices. And then finally, in this function, I just need to return true. 
by returning true, then obviously that will allow this statement to move into the while loop and then carry on. Inside the loop, uh, where I previously had this continue, which would go back to the beginning of the loop, I just need now to return. So this test on price info is none, simply means I didn't get a tick value back. And so I just want to exit this function, which will then come back to here and will iterate through the loop which means I need to return true. Now these statements where I said break, when this was inside the while loop, that break would have caused the loop to exit. I'm just going to change that to return false. And returning false simply means I don't want the loop to continue. I've already got a result here and that's the end of code that I want to run. There is a little bit more that I need to do. Uh, you see I'm using these values, price info, uh, starting price, price level high, all in the init. And then I'm using the price level high and low again uh, here. Now, that is not going to work because I need to create them as global variables here. Uh, I either need to have them as global variables or I need to return them from this function and pass them into the loop. For the time being, I'm going to make them global variables. To do that, I need to first define all of these. Uh, I think I just need, I need to create them outside any other functions. So that creates global variables, but then if I simply use them inside these functions, it's not going to access the global variable, it's just going to create a new copy that is local to the function. So before I can do that, I need to define them inside each function as global variables. So I define them as global variables in init, and that means any time I use these four values or these four variables inside this function, it will be accessing these four variables. And then I need to do the same global inside loop I think that will do it. That's my level of code tidying up for today. Here in the loop, I neglected to just return true. And now that's finished and it's done its job. So that's working the same way that it did last time, but I've just modified the code a little, uh, modified the structure of the code. Now that I've done that, I don't need a lot of the code that I had here from the previous run. So let's get on with adding in an indicator. I'm going to do much the same. I'm just going to print the value of the indicator and I'm going to put that in infinite loop for today um, because I'm going to be using an indicator when we get to turning this into an actual trading robot but I don't want to cover everything at one point so the, the indicator I'm going to use is the moving average indicator it's a standard go-to indicator because I'm calling MetaTrader from Python I have access to a number of functions but I don't have access to what I would call the client level functions inside the terminal. Calculation of moving average is a client level function. It's work that's done entirely inside the terminal. It doesn't make a call to the broker to do that. Uh, it does get the data from the broker, but all of the work for calculating moving average is inside the terminal. And the MetaTrader 5 interface from Python doesn't give me access to those client level functions. So I'm going to have to write my own moving average. And one of the reasons for choosing moving average is that it's a fairly simple calculation to do. So back to the beginning of the code. So I'll just let work from the beginning to the end. I need some more inputs. So I have a symbol. I don't need a price delta now. And here I'm going to add the moving average parameters. So the time frame I'm going to set for the moving average is the M5 because when I run this, I want something that's going to move around a little bit so you can see results changing. So I'm making a very short time frame and I'm going to make a very short period on the moving average as well. So I specified the time frame, the number of bars that I'm going to use in the calculation and the price that I'm going to use will be the closing price. Uh, this is just going to be simple moving average. I'll get to that a little bit later. I don't need any of these. 
the structure in this main doesn't change. I don't need these globals. I still need to do MT5 initialize and return false if that doesn't work. I still want to select the symbol and make sure that that's an available symbol. But I don't need to get the starting price information, so I can just remove all of that. In the loop then, again, I don't need these global values, and I don't need the current price, but what I do need is rates. So there is a function copy rates from pos using the symbol and the MA time frame. I'm beginning at bar number zero, current bar, and I want to copy period plus one. So if I'm looking at a five period moving average, this will get six results for me, or will get six sets of rates back for the last six bars. If I fail to get rates, then I'm just going to print an error message. But I'm still going to return true because I want the loop to carry on again next time. It could have been a minor interruption in the network to the broker. So I'm still going to try. I'm just going to return true at that point. And now I want to convert these rates into a data frame. I don't have a data frame here, so I'm going to have another import. to import pandas, a standard library. Probably means I don't have pandas available. So again, I'll use pip to install that. That's done. So down here I have rates. So I'm converting that rates data into a data frame. Uh, PD is the pandas package. I don't need this current price, I'll just remove that. In fact, I'll remove all the rest of that. So now I have rates as a data frame. I need to calculate that moving average. The rates obviously contain open, high, low, close type information. I want to calculate a moving average column, if you want, in that frame. And that's a simple statement. So I'm going to assign to the column that I'll call MA in the frame. Now this doesn't have to already exist. It will simply be created. So it's equal to rates frame MA price. Remember, MA price is something I set up here equal to close. And this is inside a string. So it's a name of a column in the frame. And because it's a moving average, I'm using this rolling function. That will give me the number or the MA period of values in this column going backwards from each row. So it's going to step through the rows in the frame. And for each row, it's going to get a series of values that will be rolling for MA period. I'd better write here window equals. So the window is the size of the window that I'm looking for in this rolling. And then mean is just the function to calculate the average of that. So a simple moving average, I'm just taking five values and the mean of those five values. And I, I need to have the math functions available. And now all I'm going to do is print that moving average. I'm only running every five seconds, so I'm not going to get a rapidly scrolling list. I'm just going to print the most recent moving average, which should just fluctuate slowly. Uh, even though I'm not moving to a new bar, it will just fluctuate as prices move. Actually, I'll get the value first. MA value, that's the value of the moving average. I'm getting that from the rates frame, the moving average column, and I'm using the iLock minus one tells it to step backwards by one. So it's the last element. And then I just print that with a formatted statement. That should be everything. But this will work for now. It will show me that uh, moving average fluctuating as I run this. Uh, and this is all I want to achieve for today. 
I'm going to move on next week and show just a few more functions and we should be getting to actually writing a working bot quite soon. Close that. Run again. No errors, that's good. And again, I'm just going to speed up the editor so you can see this fluctuate for a while. There is no exit condition. This will just run until it simply gets killed off. And I'll just kill that there with Control C. Uh, otherwise it would have run forever. But you can see it's fluctuating. These last few were the same, but it did change a little here in the beginning. Uh, not getting a lot of price movement at the moment. So every five seconds I'm looping through, getting a new moving average. And that's it for today. Hope this was useful to you. If it is, then click the like button. If you want to see the next and any of the other videos that come out, click subscribe and click the bell icon to get a notification when I release a video. Thank you for watching.